Well, hello, church again. I'm here with another timeless truth. And uh, today I want to talk to you about what God can't do. And you're probably thinking, well, that's not very encouraging. But I really want to talk to you in terms of what God can't do that can be and will be a point of encouragement. Now, you've heard me say before, in fact, probably many times, that God, there's one thing that we know God can't do. He cannot exercise a divine attribute, one divine attribute, to the detriment of another. I've used that in the context of, of pro, the doctrine of pro, propitiation. In other words, you, though God loves us, though God loves man, and He wants to extend grace towards man, He cannot overlook nor turn His back on His perfect justice and His perfect righteousness. Because God is perfectly just, His justice has to be satisfied. Just as you, when you go to a, a court case, perhaps a traffic case, where you have a ticket to pay, you have to pay that ticket. So God can't overlook His justice. His justice and righteousness uh, have to be satisfied. So that's something He can't do. But now, let me. Uh, what I want to do today is take that just a bit further and apply it to the promises of God. There are things that God can't do because of His divine attributes that are a point of encouragement when it comes to uh, the promises of God. They have these things that God can't do have far, uh, a far reach in terms of implications for the promises of God. For example, because God is perfectly righteous, He is incapable of deceiving us. All of His promises are true because He could not and would not lie to us. In Titus chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul says, A bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of those chosen of God and the knowledge of the truth which is according to godliness. Now watch this. In the hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago. Now that relates to the fact that promise of eternal life, but it applies to all the promises. God can't lie in terms, in the context of His promises. Here's another one. God is omniscient, which means that He's all-knowing. And because He's omniscient, He cannot forget a promise that He's made. I, I think all of us as parents have had our children say to us at some point, Dad, you promised. And you, you think, oh, I forgot that. I forgot that promise. Well, we don't have to say that to God because God doesn't forget. In fact, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, it says, But do not let this one fact escape your notice. Beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some count slowness, but He is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. That the point there, he says, he's not slow. In other words, he's not, he, God has, doesn't have to think, oh man, I, I forgot about that promise. No, he's, he knows all. Here's a, a third one. God is immutable, which means that he cannot change. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it says Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What all this means is that in terms of our the promises that He has given us, which is this tremendous stuff here, is that a promise that He made you know, hundreds of years ago, go back as far as 750 uh, B.C. He, he's not, you know, not going to change. In other words, there's not a point where He decides to rescind that promise because He has grown more mature or wiser or He has greater knowledge. No. Uh, some 102 verse 27 says, But you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. You're the same. Now here's the fourth. God is omnipotent, which means that He possesses all power. Therefore, all His promises will succeed because nothing has the power to thwart His purposes or His promises. In other words, nothing can cause Him to fail. You've heard this verse many times, I suspect. Romans 8, 35, Who will separate, or who can separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? And of course, it's a rhetorical question. 
The answer is no, no. So every promise that God has given us is certain and sure. He cannot lie. He cannot forget. He cannot change, nor can he fail. Last Sunday I said, um, let's declare war on our doubts and our insecurities. One of the ways we can do that is by clinging to the promises of God. But the things I've said today are foundational to believing those promises. So may you be encouraged by this. And, and then what, what you need to do, what we need to do always, especially during difficult times, is to be sure that you're where you need to be with God, that the relationship is uh, that you're, ha you're in God's fellowship. You see, we can never walk beyond His grace, His forgiveness, but we can walk beyond His fellowship. And that means that we have to make sure that our hearts are, are right, and that we draw near to Him. And then once we do that, when those doubts and insecurities surge in our mind, we can remember, wait, it's impossible for God to be unfaithful. It's impossible for Him to stop loving me. He may not be pleased with me at times, but it's impossible for God to turn His back on His promises to each of us. That should be a tremendous encouragement. At least it is to me. Let me pray with you today, and I hope that you're, you're where you need to be with God and, and that you're hearing from Him, that he is, um, in the midst of all this isolation, that you, that you sense His presence in a very special way through His Word. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for the promises of your word. And thank you, Father, for those divine attributes that point us to the fact that you, know, you are faithful to your promises. In Jesus' name we pray.